Good evening. This is the big story here on KTN News. Thank you very much for making the time to be with us over the next one hour. Tonight, preparations towards the swearing in of President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto are in top gear with just five days to the ceremony. But in their entry lies a lot of expectations, one of them being the tough task of unifying a divided nation. The long electioneering period has ended, but it has seemingly left behind more divisions than hopes for unity. While the Jubilee administration embraces a second chance to govern the nation, a disenfranchised opposition coalition, NASA, has other plans. The National Super Alliance has often called for cessation, citing marginalization of regions where they enjoy huge support. There have also been calls to expand the executive to accommodate the opposition. So how exactly should the unity process begin? Who should be the mediator? And when should the process begin? We explore some of those options on The Big Story tonight. And joining us on the show is Professor Gitile Naituli, a commissioner at the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Also, Professor Ibrahim Lidome, a sheikh and legal mind who was part of the constitution review process, also joining me on the show tonight. And later in the program, we'll be speaking to Bishop Dr. David Oginde. He is a presiding bishop at the Christ is the Answer Ministries in Kenya. Let's first cross over to our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, tonight to lay some ground for us on this conversation we're having on the big story tonight. So, Sophia, the president and his deputy are set to take over this country. As happens with every election, we are divided, but this is certainly not the first time we're seeing divisions of this kind in the country. Good evening, Yvonne. Yes, it is not the first time. Next week, Tuesday, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy, William Ruto, will be sworn in to begin their second term in office. And, Yvonne, they will be leading a nation that is deeply divided. However, you'll remember, even in the last election, 2013, when President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, was sworn in for his first term, he also at the time was taking over a country that was still divided at the time. In fact, one of the things he highlighted in his speech was that he would embark on unifying the country. And so some analysts would now opine five years later, he has failed perhaps Kenyans in that front, in that, again, hotly contested election, deep divisions. And we heard from Manoa Sipisu, the State House spokesperson, saying that yet again that is a process he'll continue uh, and embark on to unify the country. However, Yvonne, it is important for our viewers to understand that the president and those in the Jubilee Party, when asked about this question of unifying the country, even when I interviewed him just a few days to the 8th of August general election, he said they have done a lot to unite the country. And what he cited was that they have employed uh, several people into government from various communities. And so in a sense, and you'll hear this repeated by other cabinet secretaries, by other top leadership uh, in the Jubilee Party, that because they have all of these various communities represented in top government jobs, that is uniting. They'll also talk about development projects. But clearly, this is not what perhaps is doing it in as far as having the entire country feel packed off, included, because you were seeing a time in the 2013 election after uh, the Supreme Court then uh, held that election, uh, we were able to move on as a country, then these issues of division have come back yet again with this election. But this time around, we are seeing the National Super Alliance adamant that they will not accept and move on. We've seen talks of secession, Kilifi and Mombasa County, two counties that have made clear their intention to begin that process of seceding. Why? Because they do not feel packed off that exclusion because of these concerns around unity. Yvonne, another concern uh, that has been raised, uh, and you're seeing that, that some of the actions being taken by the National Super Alliance around the public assembly, and they're saying they will still pursue the will of the people and other channels saying the supreme will and power rests with the people themselves, that even though the president will be sworn in, even talk when I interviewed uh, two days ago, the CEO, NASA Secretariat, Norman Magaya, he said swearing in uh, on the other side, and quote-unquote, Raila Odenga, is not not off the table as far as what they're considering going forward, saying this time around they are keen to ensure their voices are heard, to continue picketing, to continue demonstrating. And so these concerns around 
divisions mm -hmm. is one that it, it will be good to hear what our viewers, uh, or rather our guests and even our viewers as they watch and engage with us through our social media will have to say about because it keeps popping up. After the election swept under the carpet, then it comes back around. Because if, if one, this is also an issue that the 2010 constitution set to resolve with devolution take services closer to the people, decentralized power. However, with devolution, with uh, uh, youth, uh, resources closer to the people and all these 47 county governments, there's still a very hot, a hotly contested presidential race. And with the talk as well about expansion of the executive to have prime minister, deputy prime minister positions, these proposals have been there so that, uh, you know, can have more of the communities feeling involved. But is that the solution? That if today, say Raila Odinga was a uh, professional prime minister, was created, would that mean the problems of disunity, lack of inclusivity have been resolved? Key questions that arise whenever we're having this conversation around unity, because 44 tribes uh, Yvonne, we have here in Kenya. A beautiful thing that we should be celebrating and borrowing and learning from each other. However, it is that we see politicians exploit especially around electioneering periods. But as a citizenry, as the electorate, we fall into that trap. And it goes down and trickles down even to school children, the young generation, as they grow up. You'll hear some of these conversations coming up, even in schools, that my mama said, don't play with this child, or this and this, um, even at workplaces, and even being devolved as well in other counties, some uh, where they're dominated by a certain tribe, saying other tribes should not come and work there. So they're real concerns and even when the uh, the question and the issue of dialogue comes up the question then that arises is how you know in what way is this dialogue to work how do we ensure that we talk to each other and resolve these deeply underlying issues that are truly a ticking a time bomb which one if they're not resolved uh, analysts say with time we will see these issues explode and not just being able to move on as we have had in the past and so even today as we have the NCIC Commission a National Cohesion and Integration Commission again they're a commission that has many a times been criticized because we only get to hear them come out to talk about hate speech but in terms of that integral role of integration and cohesion and fostering that unity there is not much coming from that end and the society at large what is the role of each individual can to ensure we achieve this unity. What will it take for a united Kenya is the big question tonight, Yvonne. Yes, that's right, Sophia. And those are the questions we will uh, be discussing with the panel. Sophia Wanuna, our lead reporter on the show, thank you very much for laying the ground for us. So let's get into that conversation and start to um, tackle some of the questions that Sophia has raised. I have uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Lithome with me, as well as Professor Gitila Naituli from the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the show. I'll start with you, Sheikh. How do we find ourselves here? Every election cycle, it, it's clear that we have some deep underlying issues that are not solved by elections. Yeah. Uh, actually, what we need to, to, to understand as Kenyans, that we had both a legal and a political problem. With the declaration by the Supreme Court upholding the election, the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta, we were through with a smaller hurdle, in my view, that is the legal hurdle. We have a bigger issue ahead of us, which is political, and for me, it's bigger even than those who set the agenda, the political agenda in this country, is so deep-rooted. Unfortunately, uh, Yvonne, our politics are so ethnicized. So we are not just divided along those political parties. It goes deeper than that. Because today, when you talk about a certain political coalition or a political party, you see certain communities, ethnic communities, that not because of the vision of that or the, 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 what that party offers, but most of us is because who is leading that party, that political party. If my community, if the leader of that party is from my community, then I belong there. And that's why today, for me, the divisions in the country is unprecedented. We've never been in this situation before because I cannot remember when last somebody was talking about cessation, mm -hmm. when somebody was talking about you swear him in, we shall mm -hmm. swear ours in. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's unprecedented, and unless we as Kenyans do something about it, because nobody is going to come from outside to help us overcome our problem, mm. 
this is our problem, and we should not look at solution maybe uh, that is limited to the political leadership of the political divisions that we have or the political coalitions that we have in that, this country because we could create those positions for individuals. Right. And for me, it will be very sad mm. if our target is only to pacify the political leadership uh -huh. in this country without going the people, uh, hanging. The people hanging down there. I, I want us to just, um, politics aside, there's very many Kenyans who feel like they don't belong. Exactly. Why? What is the genesis of that sentiment? Uh, I would say is the type of politics that we have embraced as a country. Mm -hmm. When a political leader somewhere says, it is our time to eat the meat mm. and for the others to swallow saliva, mm. what message are we passing to the people? Mm -hmm. Is that when we are in leadership, we eat and the others will go Watch. hungry. Mm. This I would say, I think our leaders should be careful when they are talking about. So we think about political leadership and then the sharing of resources. That we take political leadership, then we shall get the resources. Mm -hmm. Again, ethnicity comes in. Mm. Our man is there. It's our turn now. Mm. So this is the problem that we have in this country. Okay. Yeah. The face of the nation is what the NCIC is supposed to help us figure out and make sure that we see that just about everywhere. Professor Naituli, why haven't we achieved this? We have a commission, one in which you sit, whose work is to do exactly that, cohesion and integration. <laughs> Why aren't we there yet? Yvonne, um, the commission has been here for what, say, 80 years now? Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the Tanzanians, they started as a similar commission in 1963. Mm -hmm. They are still working on unifying the country. So um, what we didn't do, and this is why our problems look so big, is that we didn't have a philosophical underpinning of unit at the beginning, at the inception of the republic. Because that is when we were very innocent. That is when we would have been together, put together easily. Because you see, uh, if you take the Mangufuli, Mangufuli is being extremely rough in Tanzania, but he is squarely trying to revive the Nyerere spirit because he thinks that spirit has diminished in Tanzania and he wanted him back. And this is why I believe that Tanzanians are tolerating him because he is quite rough. Now, ourselves, we have no spirit to revive of anybody. There was, we don't have an icon. As somebody who stood for nothing in but Kenya, uh, we don't have that. And this is the challenge. And this is what has to come. This must come. We must get a figure that we all see the genuineness when we look at the person, the, what the person he says, and the person himself, they become the same thing. All right, but Prof, um, some would say, whilst maybe we lack a role model that we all look at and say this is a unifying factor, which ideally some would hope would be the presidency, but that aside, that your commission would play a role in terms of making it punishable for anyone that tries to drive a wedge between Kenyans, and that if you were to set an example, that that would drive everybody else into thinking, you know, that this is wrong. But somehow with your commission, it feels like people can get away with it, that especially the high and mighty. I know for sure today, if I posted a very incendiary tweet, I would be behind bars before the morning. But we know of several people that do this and say this every day, and your commission is investigating, pardon some even, we, we know of that. You know, I, I, I want them to avoid that because for me, that's really a very small matter. We, as we speak, we have over 300 people in court with the cases. They are, of course, out on bond because our laws allow that. So I didn't want uh, to go there because that the commission is doing. We take people to court. We collect evidence, we see that they are, they are separating us, we take them to the DPP, they are taken to court, then the case sits, court, the case sits there forever, and there is not much we can do about that, because these are our laws, our procedures. But what me I'm seeking as a, a citizen of this country is beyond that. I'm seeking uh, for somebody, you know, even this in democracy is not that we actually need it. If you can get somebody like Fidel Castro, you can get an honest, sincere Kenyan. Somebody who we will identify with all of us. The unity will come in one day. If you remember Yvonne uh, 202, 
Nobody can deny that immediately to two, this country was totally and percent united under Kibaki. Of course, it took about six months for the Kenyan to dismantle that. Yeah. Because the value, the value of unity, the value of peace, the value of us working together has not been ingrained in us. What we have been having is complaints, agonizing, separation, but we have never really organized this country seriously for unity. And we need to start because we need it. We need that unity. Okay. We need to live together. All right. Sheikh? Sure. I saw you having a reaction when uh, Prof was speaking. Yeah, I, the reaction was when he said, I was trying to avoid that. Yeah. But Kenyans want to know what this commission is doing. Mm -hmm. This is a constitutional commission that was deliberately established in the constitution as an independent constitutional commission to deal with issues that put wedges or drive a wedge between Kenyans. Uh, and I think. Kenyans still to see this uh, commission cracking the whip. So, Professor, don't say that you're avoiding that. Kenyans want to know. And actually, I was a little bit satisfied when you told me that they have all those cases in court. Cases, yeah. As a lawyer, I saw that these are, I, I know that these are cases are available. So, at least. But we want to see more of the commission now than ever. Mm -hmm educating the people, because it's one thing to have the law and a commission, and one thing for Kenyans to know that there is a body like this that has been created, uh -huh. and if you cross the line, uh -huh. then this, will, this is what will be done. And again, we should also see some of the politicians who we know have, everybody knows that it has become their habit. The moment they open their mouth, it is hate speech after hate speech. Mm -hmm. We'd want to see Ole Kaparo and his team mm -hmm. warning these people you know, cracking the hip and educating the people. So uh, I think, uh, Yvonne, the commission needs to do more than it's doing. Mm. And the commission needs to be felt by Kenyans, and especially at a time like, like now. This. I'm glad that you are able to invite Professor to come and talk to Kenyans. But they should be seen by, Kenya, uh, by Kenyans more often, and Kenyans should know what exactly they are doing. For example, the few politicians who we know are before the courts. It's important for the professor to come out and tell Kenyans we've taken action. Yeah. So that Kenya, you know, once Kenyans see so and so uh, was out there talking hate speech and nothing was done, they don't know about bail, he's out on bail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's important for the commission to come and educate Kenyans about that. We need deliberate civic education on that. Then talking about Tanzania, I think we cannot compare ourselves with Tanzanians. Mm -hmm. The Uzalendo that was built in Tanzanians, mm -hmm. it's only now I think they're learning their bad habits from Kenyans. We need to go back there. And for how me, do we create that? How do, how do we create this? You know, they call it Uzalendo. Yes. In the southern part of Africa, it's called Ubuntu. Yes. We don't seem to have this... Mm, you know, I mean, at our, the risk of sounding even terrible, yes. we don't seem to have a soul, like a national psyche that binds us together. You know, every challenge that you face as a human being or as a country is also an opportunity to recreate yourself. But some would have thought 2007 was that moment when we almost went over the brink. Yes. Thousand, a thousand people dead, yeah. 100,000 yeah. displaced. It seems we didn't, learn, we, we didn't learn our lesson. This is another opportunity. For me, this uh -huh. is another opportunity now. This is the time that our political leadership was supposed to stand up to be counted. Mm -hmm. And you say, OK, this is a challenge we are facing now. Can we use it as an opportunity to, to recreate ourselves? Can we now talk with each other? Because Yvonne, just think about it. Who is coming outside to, from outside to destroy this country? It's we, Kenyans. And the solution also lies with us. For me now, it's we should stop being selfish. Our political leadership, and I want to tell them on their faces, this country does not belong to you. It belongs to all of us. And the powers that you are exercising, if you look at the Constitution, Chapter 1 of the Constitution, Article 1, it says the sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya. But we have delegated it to the leaders. And it has to be exercised for the, for best, the best interest of, of the people citizens, and yeah. in accordance with the Constitution. Law, yeah. So it's the high time they know that actually this power that we are wielding is delegated to us by the people of Kenya and we should not be selfish, we should not be careless in our utterances and bring the country together. Okay. So the challenge now goes to the leadership of this country, top on the list, President Uhuru Kenyatta uh -huh. and then Raila Odinga and other politicians. Please, this country does not belong to you, it belongs to all of us. Stand up to be counted, okay. talk with each other. And let's talk about that. Um, 
you know, obviously, this the president has quite some work uh, cut out for him. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard reports that he will be magnanimous in his victory. I think he's said that as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and, 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 Prof, I'd like to put this to you. What more can the president do? I mean, I think in the run-up to uh, the August 8th election, we saw him traverse the country. He went to Kisumu, um, you know, was received well. I think there was some fracas that happened after he left. He's reached out to Mombasa. He's reached out to, you know, a number of these regions that, uh, you know, are, are strongholds of the opposition. But it seems to not be enough. So what is this one thing he can do I think that the, would then signal <laughs> unity? What the president will have to struggle with is removing the perception of marginalization. Because in, uh, in the research that we have done at the commission, we have actually found out that what we are dealing with is, is more of perception than a reality. Uh, you just started uh, talking about employment in the civil service and so on. We current research on ethnic audit of all the public organizations, and what we found was that the five major communities in Kenya, they are distributed in these organizations according to the population in the country. There is only one community which is taking a second slot, which it should not, because it's number three according to the, to, to the census of 209. So with the exception of that one, you can see that we have not been actively discriminating against one another. So you need to find a method of, of debugging that perception, because the perception becomes reality when it is not unrest. That is one. I think, too, what you also will have to do is they, there are issues which have been raised about our electoral process in this election. Those issues cannot be ignored, even though they were legally dismissed in the last petition. Those issues need to be addressed. We need to look whether what we need is actually a one-term precedence. We can even assign it to seven years or even 10, so the issue of incumbency is removed. So we, you will probably try to think whether we need a national conversation over this issue, but strictly within the law, because we cannot operate outside the law. We must operate within the law. We must find our solution to our problems within the existing legal structure so that we can remain uh, a, a viable entity. Okay, a viable um, entity. let me ask you this, Prof. Mm. Is it as simple as having um, all the face of Kenya in, in, in public service, you no. know, in cabinet? Is, is it that simple that if there's a TESO in cabinet, then I feel... No, I feel like we're there. Like, is it, <laughs> does it go deeper than that? Yvonne is much deeper than that. And in, in fact, that is why I think my colleague kind of misinterpreted me uh -huh. when I said I didn't want to go to the numbers that we have arrested. It's in deeper than that. We need to figure out why is it that we cannot obey our laws because we have enough laws. Why is it that I wouldn't get a job in the electron body or in the commission where I work, and instead of delivering this service intelligently to the republic, I keep on looking behind my back, even though the law supports me. We need to find what makes us behave like that as a country. We, we have a very big task here. Number two, we need, need to have an electoral system where we can all believe in it. Because this is a big problem. It has meant every five years an emergency in this country. So it's much deeper. We need to do a national catharsis. We need to understand what is really hails us. Why is it that we are, we are so separate from the laws that we are supposed to follow? Why is it that when you get a job in an independent institution established by the Constitution, you cannot act that independent? why that is so and why it has remained like that. Because if you look at this new constitution, you can say that it was made in a peace time, but the truth is it was more like a ceasefire document. Because we were under a crisis before we, we went into this constitution. Mm -hmm. When you look at the institution set up, like the Police Service Commission, our, you, you go back and see what is the history of our police. The administration in police job was supposed to be clobbering Africans, collecting taxes from, from us. That mindset, it seems to still continue. The normal, the, the regular police, their job was to protect the Mzungu. When the Mzungu left, they are trying to protect the rich African. We have not changed this structure okay. at all. all right, now, yeah. why are we not changing it? And we have institutions that are supposed to address that. Okay. 
interesting point about, and this is around the second time I'm hearing that, about, you know, we've not changed the colonial mindset. So, you know, we may have um, emancipated ourselves from colonialism, the shackles of it, but we still seem to have the same mentality. We will talk about that, talking, dialogue. It almost seems to have become a dirty word in this country. Um, my guests are still here with me, Sheikh Ibla Ibrahim Lithome and Professor Gitile Naituli, and also joining the panel will be Bishop Dr. David Oginde from Christ is the Answer Ministries. Some of your thoughts continue to come in on our hashtag, that is the big story. Alan O'Gara says, unity is not employing a few tribesmen with plum, plum government jobs. It starts with respect for each other, knowing all Kenyans are equal. Um, and uh, there's more that's being said about NCIC. Uh, we'll get to that. Joe Ali says, it's time Kenya was petitioned because unity can't cure injustice and indifference, but it is a tool of exploitation. Epale Oliver Kilande says, this man, Ole Kapar, is concentrating on flushing out bloggers instead of working to unite the two leaders. He imagines he's still in parliament. Another wasted chance. Keep your views coming in. The hashtag is the big story at Yvonne Okwara at KTN News. I'll be getting through to your feedback. An important conversation we must have more with my guests on the other side of this break.